Okay, well, it's been a couple of weeks, um, and it's been really, really warm. So the, the yeast in the rhubarb, um, it's finished already. Uh, so now it's time for stage two, uh, to cook it or distill it into Bialingar. So this is my little setup. Um, I bought this in Lidl, believe it or not. Um, but this time of year, um, you know, that sort of fruit time of year, um, you can find them for sale in Tesco's. Um, the equivalent of B&Q is called Obby, and they, they sell them there. Um, so yeah, everybody's at it. Uh, it's dead simple, really. There's a stainless steel pan, like a pressure cooker, to boil the stuff, and then this one is just the the condenser to condense it. Um, so we are pretty much um, ready to go, really. Um, the big pot has got 17 litres in it, or it will have shortly. Um, just sits on the cooker and boils. Um, the vapours sort of come through into the condensing coils. Um, it's full of water. I have it sort of permanently circulating very slowly from the tap so the water doesn't get too hot. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more efficient. Um, and basically that's it. You just have to stand and watch and taste every now and then. Um, yeah, when I bought these, uh, there was a special offer on um, in Lidl, and there was um, at the same time there was a, a special offer on jam making machines, and the, the shop was just full of people, like pensioners, the, and the, the ladies had the, the shopping trolleys full of jam making machines, and the old guys, they got the trolleys loaded up with these things, um, and I think I got the last one, so I was bloody lucky. Yeah, so. Remember that from a few weeks ago when I've just put 70 litres in there. Um, if you overfill it, you end up with sort of the actual the liquid going bloop, bloop, and going over and, and contaminating your um, your distillate. So yeah, another top tip: never overfill. And yeah, it's basically this. It's um, well, it's like rhubarb wine, and yeah, it tastes too bad actually. You could probably drink that as it is. Um, Actually, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Right, um, we'll get it all sealed up, turn the heat on, and then we'll see. So, yeah, in, um, in any wine, beer, or cider, um, it's a mixture of uh, water and alcohol, a particular kind of alcohol called ethanol. Um, and again, beer is about 5% ethanol or strong beer. Wines, anything between about 10 and 15% ethanol. And the idea, the idea behind this process is to concentrate the amount of alcohol. Uh, and we'll finish up here with something at about 50, 55% alcohol. Um, and the reason we're cooking it is, well, everyone knows that water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. Um, ethanol, which is the alcohol we want, boils at 78 centigrade. So the idea of cooking it is, as it gets hotter, um, the ethanol boils first, uh, and then it, it becomes concentrated. Um, yeah, because you catch the alcohol first, and then the water comes later. Um, sounds dead easy. Um, you imagine what will happen is you heat it, you heat it to 80 Celsius, and all the ethanol magically jumps into the condenser. Um, but it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Um, when ethanol and water mix, they make something called an azeotrope, uh, which is a weird. Uh, oh, it's a weird thing, trust me. Um, yeah, and instead of having a boiling po point of 78 or 100, uh, they have a boiling point somewhere between the two, depending on the concentrations, the relative concentrations of them. Um, so yeah, uh, if you've got a really concentrated uh, solution to start with, then it will boil sort of fairly close uh, to 78. If it's nearly all water and just a little bit of ethanol, you'll probably have to heat it to nearly all the way to 100 degrees to get the ethanol off. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit weird. It's, it's, a, it's a simple process, but there's a little bit of science. Um, a lot of people get really frustrated because they, they heat it up to 80 degrees and they've got nothing, no ethanol, and they think, what the hell's going on? Um, so yeah, so bear that in mind. It's simple, but it's not that simple. So, sorry. And anyone who's ever made booze We'll know immediately what this is it's called a hydrometer and it's uh, a very simple gadget that measures the density of, of a liquid and you just you put it in and it floats um, and this one's calibrated for mixtures of alcohol and water and 
The theory is, if there's lots of alcohol, um, it sinks. It's not so very buoyant. And it sinks to a level... So if it says, if 80 is the top of the liquid, the meniscus, it means that it's 80% alcohol. If you put more water in, the solution becomes less dense, so this floats a little bit better. So it'll go to 50, perhaps. Yeah, and a bit more, a bit more water, and it'll float even better. And then it'll float to about where it says 20, so 20 percent. Uh, and that's the theory. A dead simple gadget, just based on the on the density of the liquid. Um, I bought this one from Russia, so I imagine it was made for vodka or something. Yeah. Yeah. How's your Russian? Noise. Yeah, everything's warming up nicely now, 80 Celsius. Uh, I can hear it, I can hear it sort of making that simmering sort of noise. Um, this is where the magic happens. Um, it's a bit like, you know, on the films where they strike oil. Um, yeah, in a few minutes you'll get the first few drops out of here. And remember, it's an azeotrope. Um, so what will happen is the first stuff that comes over will be incredibly strong. I would imagine it probably will be... 70-75% ethanol um, but as the concentration of ethanol gets lower in here then the concentration of ethanol that distills over will become lower so it'll start at about say 75 perhaps even 80 percent initially um, and towards the end of the distillation it'll get down to about 20 percent uh, and at that point I normally stop it um, because there's no point carrying on then um, um, yeah and you'll get something in the middle the average concentration of, I don't know, 50%, 60%, something like that. Yes, the magic is happening. Oh, holy crap, that's strong. <coughs> cool, oh, lovely rhubarb though. Fantastic. Okay, this is the first little bit. This will be insanely strong. So I'll probably cough. Um, yeah, the, the other problem with doing this is that by the, by the end of the afternoon I'll be completely sloshed. So uh, <laughs> I'll apologise in advance. Hey, you should get Oh, that's strong. But that's oh. Oh, I should. Oh, well, the, yeah, the rhubarb. It kicks in. Oh, about 10, 15 seconds later. That is absolutely tremendous. So you can see that the copper tube is doing a really good job of uh, being a heat exchanger. So this is, well, that's hot. That would, yeah, that would probably burn me if I touched it. Um, but look, you can see the the vapor so hot, it's almost boiling the water. And this water is, yeah, it's warm. That's probably, I don't know, 40, 50 degrees. Yeah, so it's doing a really, really good job of, of taking the heat out of the vapor. And then obviously it gets cool, condenses. And then you get lovely booze. And, uh, oh wow! Well, uh, pleasantly surprised. Um, that's nearly eighty percent, which means the feedstock must have been considerably stronger than I thought it was. Um, yeah, eighty percent. Obviously, you're not going to drink that. Okay, so it's rapidly coming down to something a bit more sensible. That's in the 60s now. So yeah, so like I said, remember it's an azeotrope. As the volume of alcohol in the, in the feedstock gets lower, it'll, um, it'll distill over at a, a lower rate. Okay, what's that about? 50 now, so yeah, still coming down. Okay, it's um, it's still in a very, in a very raw state. I've got to distill it again. Yeah, um, I realised that distilling it twice is the real key to success with this stuff. But anyway, um, Mrs. Pilot wants to try it. Um, uh, the thing with Hungarians is that if something's shit, they will tell you. They won't be polite like Brits are. So I've got to give. Palinka to a Hungarian. Wish me luck. Good. Yeah. Oh. 
really good. Okay, yeah, we've been running for about an hour now. <clears throat> I've got about uh, three litres off from this first batch. If you remember, I started off with 17, and I've got three litres of um, distillate from it. It's still going, but it's coming over at about 20% now, so time to stop. Yeah, time to stop now. So what I'll do, um, I'll empty, I'll empty this, and then I'll fill it up with another 17 litres and do it all over again. Yeah, so it's a couple of hours later and we've had about 30 odd litres go through the first time and now we're doing the second distillation and this is where the, the magic happens. Everything gets all double concentrated with the flavours and everything and yeah, we're just waiting, we're just waiting. It's a waiting game. We just want that first drop from there. Okay, second distillation, several hours later. Lots of testing later, and I'm about three sheets to the wind. But look, double distillation, double the pleasure. Well, things are going marvellously, and it's been a very long afternoon. Um, although, obviously, I haven't been stood here all the time. So, at the moment, we've got... Um, this is the second distillation. This one is at about 75-something. This one is, like, 60-odd-something. And it's still going. The last sample I did was about 55%. So what I'll do is I'll, um, when it gets to 30, second time around, I'll stop it. Um, because then all the quality's gone. And then what we'll have, I imagine, is about ooh, four litres uh, of stuff, which is far too strong. And then tomorrow, when I'm a bit more sober, um, I'll, sort of, I'll blend it all back to about 55%. And I'll probably, I'll, I'll tweak the sweetness and what I also like to do is put a, a, a bit of actual like rhubarb in, um, just for effect. Really, it gives it that nice sort of pink sort of flavour. Because you know, you know, they say they, they taste with your eyes. When you see something that looks like rhubarb, it tastes more like rhubarb. So, yeah, we'll do that. Um, but yeah, but I, I got more. I got a better yield than I thought, actually. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's very pleasing. Very pleasing. But like I said at the beginning, it's time and patience. Uh, and an extremely well-trained liver, really. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, onwards and upwards. Okay, so it's tomorrow. Um, we got, in the end, I've got about four litres from the second distillation, um, but the average strength of it was well over 70, 70%, which is a bit too strong, really. Um, a good paling cut is between about 50, 55. Um, so what I've done, um, I've, uh, I've put about, I don't know, half a litre of water in, probably a bit more, just to sort of dilute it back a little bit. And now, the old hydrometer is saying, yeah, about 55, so that's pretty good. Um, so that's it, job done. I'll stick it back um, in the bottles. There we go. Lovely.